The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is Cowboys Storyline with Nick Eatman. What is up? It is Victory Monday. Cowboys Storyline is beginning now. I'm Nick Eatman here on Monday, December the 11th. And what a win it was for the Cowboys. 33-13 over the Eagles. I, I would say who saw that coming, but you know what? Looking back at some of the scores from last week, you guys were throwing, you know, some of the callers would throw in some scores and they'd say, hey, this is what I think. I think they're going to win by 21 or 30 points or 17. And there it is, Cowboys 33-13 and you know, what kind of message does that send? I this is The article that I wrote after the game is I, I think that whatever message was sent to the league, I think that it also was sent to their own locker room. I think the Cowboys kind of got, you know, the, a, a situation where they needed to prove to themselves, I think, that they, they could go and win games like this. They hear all the noise. Yeah, it sounds good. It feels different, all this stuff, but it's got to look different. It's got to be different. And uh, and it was. It definitely was uh, Sunday night. The Cowboys were just better than the Eagles in all three phases of the game, really. Um, you know, aside from a fake punt, whatever that 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 the Eagles got, and that was a, that was a big play for them. But but Brandon Aubrey, I think, won the special teams battle for sure. He outscored the Eagles by himself. Offense was really good, especially early in the game. Kind of, you know, tailed off a little bit in the second half. But the defense was good all day long, all night, uh, knocking the ball loose. Just physical f- um, force that they had in the game. It was impressive. It really was. And I'll be honest, I, I didn't have a great feeling about the game before, right before kickoff. I just I, I wasn't feeling great about it. I kind of thought the Eagles might respond a little bit better. But the Cowboys are just rolling right now. They really are. And 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 credit to them. Credit to Mike McCarthy too. I mean, I, I think I think McCarthy just showing the toughness. They have surgery that you know what earlier in the week, come back, coach the game. Not only coach the game, he was he was doing his normal self. He was running on the sidelines, throwing challenge flags. I mean, he really he really did a, a, a great job of of getting them ready to play. And even when he wasn't there all week long, they were ready to play without a doubt. And it showed and what a win it was for the Cowboys. All right, we want to talk about it. 888-855-2297. That is the line to call. You can text at 817-290-3298. Let's get to the calls as quick as we can here. So let's go with Joe in Stamford, Texas. Joe, what's up, man? Hey, how's it going, Nick? It's good to talk to you again, sir. Yeah, I was a little worried about you, man. Well, you know, honestly, dude, it gets really competitive. Like I told you before, I actually have to wake up like in the middle of my night because I worked in the evenings to get on your show. Uh, so we, we appreciate it. I did a couple it. of times where I just like I couldn't get in and couldn't get in. I was like, well, damn, man, do I get up or not? <laughs> <laughs> but I always listen, man, and I'm enjoying your show. Thank I, you. I listen to your regulars. I'm particularly enjoying your guy from Vegas, mm-hmm. Rob, I think is his name. Mm-hmm. Uh and there's a guy from Florida who calls in all the time, a young lady from Virginia. Yeah, yeah. And then, he, and then you got a Cowboys historian from Albuquerque. The one thing that has stood out to me, Nick, in this time of just listening and not calling is I used to think that I was this Cowboys know-it-all historian. Dude, I, there are so many people that know so much mm-hmm. more about the Cowboys than I do. It blows my mind. And that's why I love this show so much. I well, really do. I appreciate it. And, and I, I love it as well. And, and some of the questions that I get, trivia questions, I mean, they're really impressive, you know, and, and they're and they're tough. I'm, and, and, I mean, I could say there's, there's probably 10 to 15 people that call the show, and I think you're one of them that can really just go back and, and, and talk about old – old players, old games, and just bring it back like that. And it's awesome. It's really a lot of fun. Yeah, I enjoy the heck out of it, man. So uh, from uh, yesterday, um, you know, I downed on Tony Pollard earlier uh, in the season. I got to say, he is looking better and better each game. Um, also, I don't know where we would be without picking up Gilmore. What a huge pickup that is going to turn out to be for us this season, man. Yeah. Um, I think we've got the best kicker in the league. I don't know how you feel about it, but at this point, I, d- I don't know. I mean, used to, I'd say the guy from Baltimore, but right now, I don't know who's better than Brandon Aubrey. I really don't. 
Well, I mean, I, uh, I mean, who else is? I mean, is, are, have there been other kickers that haven't missed? I mean, I don't know that. I feel like there might be one or two, but I mean, not only has he made every kick, I mean, he's hit. I mean, the fifties, the sixties. I mean, it was. It, it's unbelievable. It really that, is. It, it's this is an amazing yarder, story. That six yarder was good from seventy. Seventy. Like. I, yeah. I don't think I was exaggerating. No, I mean, I he, really he nailed it right into the net, and the net's about eight to ten yards back. So yeah, yeah. You know, Nick, I think we're we regardless of what happens the next few games because it's going to be tough for us to win out. It's going to be tough regardless of that. We are good enough to go the distance. Now, will we? Well, won't uh, we? I don't know. But I, I feel like we're going to get in the playoffs, and we got a chance against everybody. I am confident in that, yeah. and I'm super excited about the rest of the season. Awesome. Thanks for the call, Joe. I, I, I think uh-huh. I think there's a lot of people that share those same. Uh, feelings about this team and just where you know how good they can be. Let's go to a text question here. Um, this one is Bobby. He's from Dallas. He says it's clear to me the Cowboys have to sweep the remaining games to have a shot at the top seed in the NFC. Do we also need to sweep those games to win the NFC East? That's where it gets a little tricky. They have. Uh, let's see what the Eagles do. I mean, obviously, if the if the Eagles win out. And the Cowboys win out. I think, from what I've read, the Eagles would win uh, the division. Um, that's what I that, and I'm not sure exactly how that works. I mean, it goes into different levels of the tie break. Um, but I don't know if that's going to happen. I don't know if both teams are going to win out. Um, and then if they lose one, it, it comes down to like who who do they lose to? Um, you know who who. You know, if if somebody loses in the division, I mean that that'll make it real easy. Um, from what I was looking at, like if if, the, if both teams go three and one, um, yeah, I think if the Cowboys are to lose a game, I think they would want to lose to Detroit, even though Detroit's kind of right behind them there. But to win the division, I think that would be the best route for the Cowboys if they only lost one. Let's say if the Eagles lose to Seattle. Because then, then now you're talking about teams that that they haven't the Eagles haven't beaten. Because if you lose to the to the Bills or the Dolphins, Philly's beaten both of them. So when you, when you're talking about head to head, and and then also you know um, you know strength of schedule and, and and the and the teams that that you have faced each other, you know that that's where I think Detroit, you know that game's gonna you know be huge. But all the Cowboys can do is just win and just see what happens. As Joe said, I don't know you know if it matters where they play. Uh, sure, you want to play at home because they're certainly great at it, but I think they've proven they can go and beat pretty much anybody. All right, Chris in Vermont our next caller. Chris. What is up, Nick Eaton? And how I, are you? Oh, man, I'm great. How are you doing? Happy Victory Monday. I'm excellent. I don't think I've ever written down Vermont on my little sheet here, so this has got to be. Well, I was listening uh, last week and heard you didn't have Vermont, so I figured I should probably give you a call. First time caller. There we go. There we go, man. Long time listener. Been listening to you since like 2013 with a lunch break. Oh man, I'm gonna call out some of the other states. I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna figure it out and call some out. I know Alaska's one, and I think South Dakota. That sounds about right. But but yeah, New Hampshire. You got any buddies in New Hampshire? You just say, hey, call up. Um, I don't. I don't think so. (laughs) Okay. I'm off road over there, but. So what's up, man? uh, Favorite favorite cowboy, Jason Witten. Mm Mm-hmm. Random Cowboy, Keith Brooking. Keith Brooking. Uh, favorite wrestler, Mankind. Okay. I mean, just the Mankind, or could it be Mick Foley, or could it be... Well, I w- that was going to be my trivia, is what were his what were his other names? I... Mick... Oh, man. Um, mankind, Mick Foley. Yeah. Not Cactus... No, not Cactus Jack. Cactus Jack. Jack. Is that one? Yeah. Okay, okay. And then is there another and... one? And... There's one more. Yeah. Kind of weird. Tell me. Dude what is, Love. What is it? Dude Love. Mm, got me. Where's Rob Phillips when you yeah. need him? Rob Phillips would have yeah. had that question all all day long. All right. Yeah. Um, so what did you love about the game or like or dislike or whatever? Man, I was at a I was at a work Christmas party last night, so I just got to watch it. I, I watched as much as I could. I watched the, the highlights this morning. Who schedules um, these super- things? Seriously. I mean, I seriously, who schedules Christmas. I don't know. Okay, sorry. 
Um, I just wanted to say a few things. So Aubrey, man, every once in a while, a team will pick somebody up and they've got, you know, some confidence that, that they've got some, some potential, but, and that they just turn out to be a gem. And, and that's, we, we got really lucky with him and, uh, he's been, he's been awesome. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I was born in 87. So I was like, as Jerry would probably say, knee high to a grasshopper watching the 90 Super Bowls. Um, and unfortunately I've been watching, watching them ever since open for another one. Um, I've got a place in North Carolina and went to the last two, uh, Panthers games. This last one, fortunately I was able to bring my toddler to his first Cowboys game, which was awesome. I, he had a Romo Jersey, but he outgrew it. And, um, I got him a lamb Jersey right around the time, the, the first Eagles game. And he's gone off ever, ever since I got that Jersey. So I guess, uh, well, we'll take credit for that. Buy him, buy him, yeah. <laughs> buy him another one. So give him another. I don't get... care about. I don't care about the record. I think we. I think we can beat anybody. I don't care where we have to go. Um, I think we can. There, there's not a team in the NFL that we can't beat at, at their house. Uh, scale of one to ten. What's your confidence that we beat the Forty ers uh, uh, You know, at the at San Francisco, and I'll uh, hang yeah. up. Yeah. And... Uh, I think. I, thanks for the call. I appreciate that. The, the question about the 49ers and the confidence level there. Um, it's, it's probably like a four or five. Um, but see, here's the thing. It depends, you know, when do you play them? Because if you go play the 49ers, you've, you've already won a game in the playoffs, probably. Probably. And, and you know, it, maybe it's in the championship game. And maybe you've won two games at this point, you know. Or who knows how it all shakes out. But my point is, is I think the confidence level is going to be higher. Even though you don't go beat the Niners, you go beat somebody. And you're probably going to beat someone on the road. So to, to be able to go at that point and go play the Niners, confidence is a little bit higher. Um, I think it'll be, it'll, you know, I think, I think we'll even know more about this team. So, I mean, right now, you only going off of what, what you, you know, what you've seen. And, the Niners definitely have the Cowboys number, and the Niners are playing really, really good football. So that's going to be a challenge. But I do like the fact that the Cowboys look different from the last time they played the Niners. Um, they've changed some things up. They've changed things up in their in their offense. They they do a lot more motion, a lot more movement. They 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 were pretty much a sitting duck for the 49ers in before. Now they're doing things that. That you know, look at look at what CD Lamb's doing. Look what Brandon Cooks has done. So I think Dak's playing a lot better. I think this offense is is rolling way way better than it was the first time. Um, but you know, we'll we'll see what happens. And I think it was evident with with the Philly game. I think I think that they they did a really nice job in this game Sunday night, just showing some improvement. So um, you know, it's it's not high because of what we've seen before. But I think when you have to play them and what will happen to get there, I think it would probably be uh, way better. All right. I don't see uh, uh, phone lines are open right now. Uh, 888-855-2297. Got a text question here. Just wanted to know if Indomitian Sue would be a good fit to replace Hankins going forward. Um, we'll see what's up with, with, with Hankins. Uh, some reports on it on an ankle, maybe high ankle sprain. I don't know if you need to go sign someone to, to um, you know, re replace him right now, um, especially so at that caliber. But I'm I'm sure, you know, looking at, at a guy like I, I guess he's out there. I don't even know if Indomitian Sue is out there, but um, you know, he usually signs with with somebody that with a chance to to you know to go far in the playoffs and I'm sure the Cowboys would be uh, that team uh, to do that. So uh, again, I don't, I don't know about that. I don't know about them, them signing or adding players to that. It'll kind of determine to see how bad the injury is. I, I'll say this about Hankins. I mean, he walked right past us in the, after, out of the locker room and he was, he was pretty quick, you know, moving. So I didn't get the sense of him walking away that it was like, oh, this is bad. He's going to be out for a little bit. You know, I mean, how much running does he really need to do anyways? Obviously, you need your ankles. You need your strength. You need to be able to push off and leverage and all that stuff. But just from the sense, from what I saw, it didn't, didn't seem like a really bad injury. But, again, I'm not a doctor. It didn't, you know, I slept at home last night, so I, I don't have anything going for me there. All right, Brian in Kansas City is next. Brian. 
Good morning, sir. Are you lined up on sides? Sorry. <laughs> Not funny. <laughs> Oh, man. man. Poor Mahomes looked like he had a meltdown. I blame the center. I think the center moved the ball, honestly. Oh, no. If you look, at, if you look at where the blue line is, we're talking about the Chiefs game, the, the play that uh, Kadarius Toney and, uh, was lined up off sides. I'm sure you've seen it uh, wiped out, which w- would have been one of the greatest plays in, Cal- in, in Chiefs history or in regular season history. But, man, that, that was a tough way to lose. Um, yeah, I was waiting for the Stanford fan to come marching yeah. onto the field as he scored. Yeah. I'm like, wow, well, look at this play. And then uh, you see that, and you're like, oh, wow, but, that's just something. But I say that just because I looked at the ball, where the ball was, and where the blue line was. And I feel like maybe sometimes, and I've, and I've heard this, sometimes the center will move the ball forward or backwards a little bit, um, just just you know, just trying to get the grip or whatever. And and sometimes that's, that's kind of what you see. You go off of what the ball is. So... You know, now Tony should have been going off of where the ball was, but whatever, <laughs> whatever. That, that's their problem, and and they'll figure it out. No one's worried about. It. No one's no one's feeling sorry for the Chiefs. No, no. What's up, Brian? Not. Hey, so you know, I thought it was just unbelievable that you know last week I was a little concerned that the Seahawks run run up so many points on our defense, and then this week, <laughs> holy cow, six points is all that the Eagles' offense could muster. Yeah. I mean, that was a defensive light out performance. I mean, geez, that and, was just really something. And needed a fake punt to get down there for one of the field goals. One you know, I mean, goals. they they really did not move the ball at all. No. 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 Hey, you know, and this is something I'm I'm kind of picking up on because I hear, you know, you know, different things from y'all's podcasts and a little bit on the broadcast, too. So, you know, I'm always saying, you know, if I could have anybody from a previous area, I'd, I'd put Eric Williams back out at right tackle because he'd just fight everybody. Right. So, I, you know, during the during the uh, preseason, it looked like Biotish was that guy. Like he was always getting into fights and kind of had the attitude of the for the offense. Now I think it's Jake Ferguson. So I just figured I'd get your opinion on that. And uh, go Cowboys. What a beatdown. Yeah. And I'll uh, hang up and listen, brother. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate that. Um, uh, you know, and, and I say this, obviously, you're in Kansas City. And, 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 I, and I mean this, like, just watching him play. The way that Ferguson is playing right now, you know, they got the same number and all that. But he is playing like Kelsey. He really is, and I I am not sitting here to say that he is the next Jason Kelsey or whatever. But uh, or Tra- uh, Travis Kelsey, Travis Kelsey. Sorry, uh, he's not the next Jason Kelsey either. But that'd be cool if he was too. But um, I, I feel like like the way that he he he's just in a dangerous threat in the open field, and he's so athletic. I mean, teams are going to start. You know, they're not going to go low anymore on him. I mean, he's jumping over everyone. Um, and, and that was a really big play in the game, just to, just to get those extra yards for a first down. Um, he's he's just making plays in the open field. He's he's not content on just going down. You know, I mean, Jason Witten was one of the best players in Cowboys history. Um, you can say what you, what you want about athletic ability, whatever. The guy could get open. He could get open, but he you know he wasn't so much the you know, the yak guy, you know, the yards after catch. He wasn't that guy that would, you know, catch the ball and then go make a play. Um, and that's that's what they, they're, they're having with, with Ferguson. Again, I'm not saying Ferguson's better than Jason Witten or Travis Kelsey or anything like that. What I'm saying is, is they have a playmaking tight end now that can catch the ball. He's pretty sure-handed. He's had a drop or two, but, I mean, he's pretty sure-handed. And then he's doing something with the ball down the field. And to do that and to be that type of guy with the weapons you have at receiver and running back, that makes this offense even better. You know, that's what I'm saying. I think the Cowboys are a much better football team than they were when they played the 49ers the first time because of the way their offense is is rolling right now and the way that they're calling the games and all that. I think they're better. I bet the 49ers are better, too. But what I'm saying is I just think the Cowboys are a lot better. And we don't even know if they're going to play the 49ers or whatever. I'm just saying they're going to have to play some really good teams, and it starts the next three weeks. They play really good football teams the next three weeks, and then they're going to go to, into the playoffs, and they're going to face good football teams. And I just think they're a better team than what we've seen when, when they you know they lost pretty bad a few uh, – like a month ago. All right. Rob is in Vegas. Rob. Hey, Nick. Hey, how are you doing? Back, 
That's championship football. There we go, Rob. That was nineties football. That was smash mouth. We didn't we weren't tackling, we were hitting. There you go. Jalen Hurts didn't want it anymore. They were killing Devontae Smith that he just was coughing it up like crazy. I mean, I was on last week. I said I wanted to see Donovan Wilson get out of witness protection. <laughs> he did. And he, and he, he did. did, yeah. He, he made a huge play. I thought the whole secondary, especially the safeties, really showed up. You're right about that. All the safeties made some kind of play yeah. in the game, a turnover or a deflection or something. They put curse yeah. on A.J. Brown a little bit in the slot, which kind of scared me for a second. But, I mean. Totally, totally different. Yeah. Uh, you had uh, the old man, Stefan Gilmore. I guess if you call him old, he, he goes back five years. Hey, be call careful. Him old every day, be careful. Right? Yeah, yeah. It, it was, and then you got a cool hand, Luke Brandon Aubrey. That the younger generation is going to have to Google that. But th- I got to tell you, he's close to being the MVP of that game. What yeah. you ask that kid to do I know. is if he misses those kicks, the, you, the field position, I mean, it was just great. I, the only thing, no negativity whatsoever. I just thought they took the, the boot off the throat in the second half. They could have put that game away. I think they played not to lose instead of to win, especially when they got the turnover. And then the 15-yard, they had great field position. I think they were close to midfield. and They didn't do nothing with it. But Mike McCarthy, I mean, come on, the man gets off the operating table. So anything that was bothering you, a cold, an, an ankle, when you looked over and saw this guy, I think that was definitely, that got them going. It was just, it was listen, it was a butt kicking, and I know not everybody's seen the 90s Cowboys, but that's what they kind of look like. We yeah. got attitude on offense. J- Jake uh, Ferguson got attitude like Michael Irvin. They just, they got attitude, and the defense played, it was, it was awesome. It was, it was an awesome night. And what's crazy about your show is, my brain kicks in at 4.30 in the morning. Yeah. I start thinking about the game, what I'm going to say. It wakes me up. <laughs> it got my adrenaline going, and, and I've been up ever since. I'm sure I'm going to crash later, but, hey, uh, it was worth it. It was worth it. Yeah, awesome. Thanks. I appreciate it, Rob. Thanks for uh, uh, being supportive and, and be, you know being uh, ready to call. You know, it makes me wonder. I bet you there's some people that are like, man, I got to call in. I got this to say, this to say, and, and you don't get in just because of, you know, it, we we got the two phone lines and and we got a lot of a lot of people calling, which we appreciate. We definitely do. Uh, but keep calling, keep calling. You you'll you'll get in for sure. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with that. I think it did have a feel of the '90s type team. I mean, this team has has kind of the, those teams could win in a lot of ways. Uh, and you know, I, I believe that '92 team had a rookie kicker named Lynn Elliott that nobody really thought was was going to be that good. And then he ended up he ended up having a good season. I don't he didn't have a great career, but I uh, had a good season. Um, but but that team could win in a lot of ways. And you know they they, they ran the ball a little bit. You know then obviously Emmett Smith ran the ball you know better than 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 most teams. Speaking of Emmett, got a chance to talk to him on the pregame show yesterday. And uh, you know he he actually alluded to the fact of of the Eagles. You know because when he was young younger like in ninety ninety one the Eagles were a lot more established and they had to go and they had to prove to themselves they could go beat the Eagles. You know, you got to get over the hump and, and, and beat them. And they proved it, you know, and not only did they, did they beat the Eagles, but they beat the Eagles twice in, in one season in 92 to make it to the Super Bowl. And so that was really big, you know, and I think it was a big hurdle, a mental hurdle. And maybe the, this goes, the, you know, the same way, but yeah, I thought, I thought, Oh, all around, it was a really, physical game for the Cowboys they they kind of showed that they you know they're not gonna be pushed around uh, at least not by the Eagles so but they're probably gonna face them again you know I would I would imagine wouldn't surprise me and who knows where that game will be but I think if it's in Dallas or if it's in Philly it's gonna be a, a good game so all right let's go to the lines in uh, Bowling Green Kentucky Michael is up Michael what's on your mind well, first of all, I just ordered your book, If Walls Could Talk, off Amazon. I'm waiting for that. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. I heard you talking about your book, I think, Friday. You were talking about you know, doing a book review thing or yeah. something. I'm, like, I'm going to bring some up. books in. But I don't know when the, the best day to do that. I want to do it before Christmas, but we don't have a show tomorrow. That's just kind of a schedule update. There is no show, no, no podcast at all 
uh, across the board tomorrow. So maybe Wednesday or Thursday, but you know we got to get into got to get into Buffalo week and all that. So I, I, I am going to do that at some point. I've got a, a stack of books, some of them mine, some of them people that that I know that have written books. I'm going to promote some. So yeah, I'll be doing that at some point here at soon. Well, I called after the Eagles after the Eagles beat the Cowboys and said, uh, and I thought we were going to win out. And I still believe that. And I believe if we went out, Dak will win MVP. Yeah. And uh, but the thing is, I about middle way of the fourth quarter last night, I went, I went, yeah, we got this wrapped up unless something crazy, crazy happens. And I started thinking, you know, this, it doesn't really matter because yeah, we're going to win. And if we went out, and even if the Eagles went out and we still don't win the East, I think we're still, I think we're still. We're in good shape because I think even if the Cowboys don't win the East, they're going to go to Tampa or whoever, Atlanta, whatever, yeah. and just I don't think they'll have a letdown. And then if they had to play the Eagles again, I think it'd be the same show but on the road. And I just I think Dallas is going to be ready for San Francisco next time. Yeah, I, I, you were talking about how different they're playing. I think they'll be ready for the 49. I mean, they might not beat them, but I don't think it, it won't be like last time. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I, I, I think that they're they're just playing at such a high level. But, you know, we're going to still, you know, like this gauntlet's not even close to being over. I mean, like, you know, it's Buffalo just beat the Chiefs. Miami's playing really well right now too and um you know they're gonna they're gonna have a lot of weapons a lot of speed a lot they're gonna be you know challenging the cowboys in a lot of ways and then detroit's oh. gonna come in here you know and and they'll be ready to fight i mean that's the thing about dan campbell's teams they'll be ready to fight i don't know how good the i don't know how good detroit is i really don't i don't not sure on that um but that's okay i mean they, they won games and they're gonna put themselves in position to go prove it so you know they're they're gonna be a tough out for sure so we got a lot. We got a lot to see about this team here, even in the next three weeks before Philly again, or the Niners, or you know anything in the playoffs. You still got some games, and that that's what what makes it fun. When will we hear about Hankins? Because we can't lose him. No, yeah, he certainly can't. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if I mean, actually, you know, I say that Stephen Jones uh, does a, a he does a call today on the radio. Uh, he might have an update on Hankins. We'll be we'll be listening for that. So I, I would imagine something here in this afternoon. I think Dallas is in good shape. All right, to go all the way to the NFC Championship game. I don't know about after that, but I well, think let's do it. In good shape to get there. Hey, why stop? Let's just keep let's keep it rolling. All right, uh, thanks for the call. Uh, I'm gonna take a break here on Cowboys Storyline. Uh, we got some more uh, callers and text messages to read. Be right back here. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. But the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Cowboys fans, after that move, we've just coined the term Rowdy Replay. Let's roll back the tape. Okay, there's our mascot Rowdy cheering on the boys. And now he's on his phone, on his Bank of America mobile banking app? Staying on top of his finances with his virtual financial assistant, Erica. Bank of America's digital tools are so impressive. Cowboys fans just can't stop banking. Learn more at bankofamerica.com slash can't stop banking. Erica is only available in in the English language. You must download the latest version of the mobile banking app, only available on select mobile devices. Message and data rates may apply. Member FDIC. Welcome back into Dear Doctor, the show where I answer life's questions with an ice-cold can of Dr. Pepper. Sheila, let's hear from our next caller, would you? Dear Doctor, my friend supported me during a tough time, but what's the right gift that says, thanks for being a soldier to cry on? Okay, this one's easy. I say, give her a delicious Dr. Pepper. Nothing says, thanks girl, better than a one-of-a-kind soda. Yes, any Dr. Pepper flavor will do. Now, just a reminder that I don't need to be a real doctor to know that Dr. Pepper is the one you deserve. They say champions are remembered, but legends 
are never forgotten. United Ag and Turf offers a winning lineup of John Deere equipment built to tackle any challenge on and off the field. Legendary John Deere tractors, combines, residential mowers, commercial mowers, compact construction equipment, gator utility vehicles, and a full line of golf and sports turf equipment. United Ag and Turf, the official Ag and Turf equipment supplier of the Dallas Cowboys. Visit unitedagandturf.com to find a location near you. Back, back to Cowboys Storyline. All right, back here on Cowboys Storyline. Let's go to the phone lines. We have Jeff. He's in North Carolina. What's going on, Nick? What's up, Jeff? You doing all right? I'm doing good. How about you? Are you doing good? Is that game all right man, for I'm you? Doing, I, I am doing great, man. I'm off this week and coming off a great victory. I thought I got to call my buddy Nick. And- <laughs> Talk about the Cowboys. <laughs> yeah. Yep. What was your favorite part of the game? I just, man, you know, Nick, it was, it's not, it wasn't even as close as the score was. It wasn't. I didn't. I, I, no, I, I wrote that. Was, I wrote the same thing in my yeah. article. It was a 20 point win, and it was, wasn't even that close. Yeah. I mean, you could just, from the first drive, we went down the field and scored, and I thought, man, we're in good shape. Thought Gilmore played great. Yep. I mean, he he played. He got in AJ Brown's head last night, and yep. uh, thought he played great. And and you know they're going to have a tough game this week. I mean, because they yeah. struggle against teams with good receivers. And yeah. uh, and if they can, if Geno's back playing quarterback, and they give him time, I mean, the Eagles might have a tough time this week too. So, yeah. but uh, but I thought it was a great win. I thought uh, Mike done a great job again, calling plays. Thought Dak just done his thing, and man, it's just great. And uh, guy. Got a random cowboy for you, which he's not real random, but I remember, I think it was 1984, opening night. I believe that was the night that uh, um, Gary Hogaboon made his st- uh, uh, first start for the Cowboys. Uh-huh. And I think at the time, he, he had 33 completions that first game, which at that time I think was a Cowboys record. Really? And uh, I'll let you check on that. And uh uh, so everybody thought he was going to be the big thing, and it didn't. It didn't last real long. Didn't la- yeah, it didn't last. No, it didn't yeah. last. You know, I think he was on uh, Survivor. Did you know oh, that? Oh, really? Gary yeah, Hogan. I, talking, I do remember that. Talking yeah. about Gary Hogaboom, right? Yeah, I think he ended yeah, up being yeah. on like Survivor. Or, or <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Man. I mean, you know, yeah. I don't think he. I don't think he did as well as like my man Danny McRae. But I mean, I think. Right. Uh, yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah, they played the Rams in 84 to start the season and won. But uh, he didn't last long as a starter. I mean, I know that was the year that Dan- Danny White and Hogaboom was a controversy, but I think White ended up getting it back. Um, sure did. Yeah, they both they both threw like 200. And, I mean, they threw a bunch of pass. Hogaboom actually played a little bit more. but um, right. But, yeah, Gary Hogaboom. Yeah, it didn't didn't I think last. He went on to play for the Cardinals. Cardinals, he? he sure did. I yep, he did. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, all right. Great show, Nick. Thanks. I appreciate ta- you taking my call. Yeah. And, uh, and maybe uh, since I'm off this week, I might call you another time this week. All right. We'll see. Sounds great. Right. Yeah. Like all I said, right. thank Have you a good for day, the, buddy. you too. Um, yeah, won't be the, tomorrow. Like I said, I, 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 um, our schedule is going to change for tomorrow. We we do not have shows. Um, our whole team is going to be um, – we'll be going volunteering at the Salvation Army uh, tomorrow uh, afternoon. So we're just – we're kind of wiping out all the slate of shows uh, on a Tuesday. So that's okay. We'll get back get get back after it on Wednesday for sure. Um, you know, one of the things – I've got the phone lines are open still, I think, at this point. 888-855-2297 if you want to give us a call and uh, tell us what you think about the game. This week, um, you mentioned Gilmore. You know, I thought I thought you could make a case for about five players yesterday at least. This is just this is not even guys like in the trenches or whatever. I'm just talking about five guys that you could kind of watch and see that played their best game of the season. And what a great time to do that. You know, I mean, Gilmore for sure. I mean, Gilmore, that was the best game he's played probably in a while. Probably, probably didn't play many games like that with the Colts or they – I don't think they would have traded him for a fifth-round pick. I mean, he was really, really good. I thought Gilmore had his best game of the season. I thought uh, Donovan Wilson uh, had his best game of the season. He hadn't play, played. I wouldn't say he had played poorly, but he just hadn't played to the level that you kind of expected. You know, he signed a big contract. And I thought he was really setting the tone with some big, big hits 
did a nice job in the game. I thought that was his best game of the season. Probably Michael Gallup's best game, maybe not stat-wise, but scored a touchdown, had a great catch on the sideline, drew a pass interference penalty that led to a field goal. Uh, you know, and, and we talked about Gallup a lot. You know, I know the fans are kind of hard on him. I, I just haven't been because I think he's just – he's his attitude is right. He handles it the right way. He's not a featured receiver, but he's going to go out there. He's going to keep running routes. He stays engaged. He's going to make a play when you need him to. And, I, you know, I, I think that he's a good third receiver to have. Again, don't worry about the money right now. The money is the spent. Money is what, what it is. Just we'll worry about that in the offseason. I, I think having Gallup on the team um, is is a good thing. And, I you know, he did a, a nice job. And uh, in that game, I thought, I thought Aubrey probably played his best game, even though he's had a remarkable season so far. Still, a 60, a 59, another 50, a 45 to clinch out the game. I mean, it was it was awesome. No missed extra points. I mean, he was basically making field goals on the on the on the kickoffs. I mean, he was he was definitely locked in. So, great stuff. You could go on and on about other other guys. I think there's some other players maybe that you could say played their best game, but those guys for sure, Gilmore um and and Donovan Wilson, Aubrey Gallup, maybe Ferguson too. I mean, Ferguson, he's had better stats. It's not all about stats. It's just kind of the plays that you made and, and how you made them. All right, let's go to the line here. Mark is in Florida. Hey, Mark. Hey, Nikki. Hey, Nikki. How you doing, buddy? I'm good. How are you? I, all right. I got to take. I got to take two Cowboys: Billy Joe Dupree and Larry Cole. All right. Uh, my un, you know, underrated, solid football players. Yeah. Love them. Billy yep. Joe had amazing hands. Last night's game, uh, the first drive, we got third and one. I think we were around 40, 45, and there's no back in the backfield. He's in the shotgun, and we do the sweep to Turpin. That's great. This running game, for most of the year, we couldn't run between the tackles. Mm -hmm. And to me, you got to move the defensive line, and let's, we got to say what it is. Our best run game was to the outside of the tackles. Last night, finally, finally, the kid ran in between the tackles and we moved people off the line. And I'm going to attribute that to, keep my fingers crossed, a healthy offensive line finally playing together. People, I don't think, realize how important it is that the guy to the right of you, the guy to the left of you, you, you think is one. You think, And if you change out one player, don't forget, early in the year, we played one game without three starters. Okay. Right. So, you know, and, and nobody and forgets that game. <laughs> nobody. Yeah, well, I mean, seriously, nobody forgets losing to the Cardinals. Right, so. right, right, right. But I think, I think that game was a typical offensive line problem game. Right. You know, uh, they were all over Prescott. We couldn't run the ball. And uh, so, so happy to see them run in between the tackles. I just don't like when you're third and short. And you're in a shotgun with no back next to you. you uh, to me, you're just telegraphing that we're running, that we're going to pass the ball. And right. if it ain't a pass, it's that it's that jet sweep. You know, yeah. I want them to to think about, hey, they could come up the middle. You know, with a running back. And he didn't do it on the first drive. And I just go, here we go again. But then later on in the game, they ran in between the tackles, and I, I I'm very very happy. Yeah. Lastly, yep. Lastly. We got to be realist. Uh, the schedule doesn't favor us. The Eagles have a big edge on the division. So in my mind, uh, you know, Giants, Cardinals, Giants. I know it's the NFL. If you think it happen, but I ain't putting my money on those three on those two teams no. to beat the Eagles. So you know what? We we'll take the fourth, uh, the fifth seed, and we go to the South. We'll be we'll be fine because you got to win on the road in this league, and you win on the road by running the ball, and finally. I All see right. a run game. All right. Sounds good. All right. Thanks for the call, Mark. You know, about that about the Eagles schedule, I mean, I'm gonna just say this. The Giants are going to give the Eagles a game, one of these two games. I mark it down. I you know, I don't know if they can win the game, but they will they will give them a game. They will I mean they will be way more competitive against the Eagles than they have been against the Cowboys uh this year. And, uh, you know, these they got two games up there. We'll see what the weather looks like. But I could definitely see a situation where the Giants are giving them. So I, I don't know if they beat them, but 
I, I, I wouldn't just write that off just yet. Uh, we'll see about the Cardinals. You know, I think they're on a bye this week. They are on a bye. Um, who knows? You know, who, who knows? And who knows what the Cowboys do? You know what I mean? The Cowboys, in Seattle, they got, Eagles got to play Seattle. A lot, a lot of stuff can happen. You know, and, and, it, and weird things happen all the time. I'm watching highlights as we speak of the Bears just whipping the Lions. You know, you, you never know. You just, you, you don't know what, what's going to happen. All right. Travis is in San Antonio. Travis is our next caller. Happy hit him in the mouth victory Monday, <laughs> Nick. Hit him in the mouth Monday. I like yeah. it. That's great. That's a great term. Dude, that's exactly what go. happened. That's exactly what happened. They they I, they beat him down. I don't know if I can get a, a here we go from Chris, but I think I have the new record for phone calls. It was like 170. So the line, the, the calls have definitely been flying. There you go, sweet. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say I think uh, I think someone mentioned earlier about Jake Ferguson. I think I was kind of waiting for someone on the uh, the offensive line. I'm not saying that you don't have tough guys up there. But he seems to be this year. He seems to really have taken a step, kind of being the like the emotional, uh, you know, like leader as far as on the field goes. Mm-hmm. Even more, even more so than CD. And I think Dak mentioned it after a post game where he said he's on. He kind of rides the line of uh, you know, sane and crazy. And I got to kind of reel him in somewhat. But I think it's good to have someone on that on that you know on that line that can kind of that gives the team that energy. So I think that's a plus in. I know Brian brought us earlier this week was talking about I looked up some stats to get for uh Jalen Hurts against pressure and when he was pressured he didn't deal with like the blitz very well as far as throwing goes. So I was saying coming out of the week I wanted them to not sit back, but I know, you know, the whole San Fran thing was rush four and kinda of don't come after him. I was actually happy to see that Dan Quinn, um, on a couple of those third downs, especially the one where uh, Gilmore made that play, you know, mm-hmm. tackling him in the open field, Devontae Smith. I was happy they came after him because he doesn't look like he wants to get. I'm not saying quarterbacks want to get hit, but you know what I'm saying. Like, yeah, it doesn't. He looks, he looks like he doesn't want to take any kind of contact right now when he's backpedaling and throwing that ball like short like that. So I think that was smart There's, to do. Um, and just want to see what your thoughts. Yeah. were. Yeah. Well, thanks for the call, uh, Travis. Uh, as always, so appreciate that. And, and you know, the, the the blitz was was there. I mean, all, all, all night they they timed it. They they did a nice job of timing it too. And Eagles are a hard team to kind of play. Um, I it looks like a false start every play. It really does. And 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 the thing that that bothers me about the about the inconsistency in the rules is just that like. You know how you know how I feel about like the tush push and stuff like that. I just don't understand why there's inconsistencies with the way the game is called for one play or one position than any anyone else. For instance, like I've said, you cannot leverage yourself on someone else to block a field goal. So, but you can push someone in the back if they're not close to a first down or they haven't got a first down. You can push them into the end zone. That just seems inconsistent to me. Um, also, a wide receiver has to be set. He could be in motion. He has to be set and then snap the ball. But a guard can can get up and and make a move and get down and, and snap the ball. I mean that that play was causing the Cowboys to jump. I mean that that looks like it, that's that's a false start to me. The biggest one for me is that like if you're blocking someone or you're rushing, if you get your hand up in the face. Penalty, and we saw it. Micah Parsons got a penalty with his hand laying Johnson's face. However, if you have a football in your hand and you're on the sideline and a guy's coming to tackle you, you can just club him right in the face, and that's okay. You, it doesn't hurt because you have a football, I guess. You can just smash him right in the face, and that's a face mask, and that's okay because you have a football. Inconsistencies like that, like those are the things that just kind of bother me. So I don't know. I'm just kind of venting on that one. Sorry, um, but yeah. As for Jake Ferguson, and we had a text message question from Kent in Las Cruces about that. He says, how long before Ferguson starts being mentioned as one of the best tight ends in football? Now. Now. I think let's let's do that now. Because he is making, not only is he, is he making catches, making plays, big, big plays in the game. I mean, he is a guy on third and five, third and 16. We saw it a couple weeks ago. He is making... Game changing plays that moving the sticks, keeping first downs alive, and he's playing with the swag. I don't think he's playing with, you know, I don't think he's a big trash talker. I really don't see that. 
but he ain't gonna let you talk to him. You know, I mean, he's gonna bring it back. Um, but but I, I think he's just doing it the right way. He's having fun. I mean, those tight ends are always having fun. But but I think he's he's becoming a really dynamic tight end, and it's and it's only going to. And you do that, and that's the thing. You talk about those '90s Cowboys, and and what did that team have? You know, this team does not have an Emmitt Smith. Okay, we know that they don't have an Emmitt Smith. But then again, the league isn't really designed the same way for that kind of stuff. Um, but they have playmaking wide receivers. Uh, they have a tight end now that 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 it, you can trust and you can make catches and you know it's almost like a, a, a you know oversized receiver really and that's what kind of what Ferguson's become. All right, we got uh, Bob is in Rio Grande Valley. What's up, Bob? Morning, morning, Nick. Morning. To paraphrase the late great Jackie Gleason, how sweet it is. <laughs> I tell you what, brother. It, uh, the birds uh, seem to be singing a little bit uh, louder this morning. Not, not, day. not the ones in Philly. Not those birds. No, no actually, no. funny you say that. You know what? Those birds have been singing. I don't know if you guys caught that, but you know the Eagles have just put out a brand new CD. They, they, they've made. You know, they, they, they published their own, um, their own record. Uh, Jason, uh, Jason Kelsey has a song on it. Uh, some of the other players have, you know, so that they, they've been really, so I wouldn't be too worried about them. You know, maybe they're not too happy about the game, but at least they've got an album, you know, of music that they were able to put out. So good for them for doing that. So yeah, the maybe birds the, are singing up there. Maybe the maintenance crew can play that, uh, album while they're, uh, vacuuming up all the Eagle feathers out of <laughs> AT&T stadium. How about that? Yeah. If, who are you going to mention in a game like we just witnessed last night? <laughs> I mean, you want to talk about Gilmore, you want to talk about uh, Ferguson, you want to talk about Dak, you want to talk about Aubrey. Man, the list goes on and on and on. It, uh, appreciate you taking my call. What a great victory Tuesday. Yep. Well, it's Monday still, I believe, but uh, but you can you can still, you know, you can, is it? It is Monday, right? Okay, don't, don't confuse me here, uh, Bob. Um, yeah, good good stuff for sure. Uh, all right, let's go to Brian in Pennsylvania. It's probably gonna be our last caller, Brian. Oh man, hey, what's going on, Nick? Are you are you going to work today? What's going on here? You got people that you wanna you wanna see? Uh, I actually have a final, a college final this morning oh. or this afternoon. Oh, okay. And my you're just a young, you're just a young buck. Fan. Uh, no, uh, retired military. So oh, okay. I'm, All right. I'll I'm just, on my, I'll just my shut up and row. ask the questions. How about that? <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> hey, All right. Man. I mean, who am I to uh, say anything to you? You got to walk up to Emmett Smith or like see Emmett Smith and be like, hey, man, how's it going? You want to be on the camera? Well, it didn't happen exactly like that. Chris Beam was actually the one that kind of stalked him. And then, uh, and you know, he was kind of the, the, the setup man. And then, and then, uh, Roxanne Medina, who's done you know, some great work with us for a lot of you know, a lot of years. I won't say how many, but she know she knows Emmett Smith and he knows her and he was like, oh yeah, for sure. You know, Rox is the closer. You know, everyone no one says no to Roxanne. So Roxanne was the one who said, yeah, come do this interview, and he's like, okay, and he comes over and does it. He said he only has two minutes, but he had about three or four, and he cussed, by the way. Yeah. yeah, well, must be a tough gig. You talk to him about uh, short running backs, and he lets you know what he thought oh, yeah. about it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He uh, he didn't like that. I mean, he was fine, but yeah, he, you know, it's the internet. He can cuss. That's fine. All good. He yeah, said, I mean, he's he, heard he's that. A man, he can do a lot of things. He right? can. And I Especially said that. And, and, and I said that too. I was like, I I do think everyone says the word goat all the time, too often. Not with Emmitt Smith. You can call him the goat because he's got the, he's got the rushing record to prove it. So. Yeah, I remember that day. That was crazy. Yeah. Uh, anyways, random cowboy, Ron Fellows. Oh, yeah. Ron Fellows. There goggles. Go. Wore the goggles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wore the goggles. Scored a couple touchdowns. Um, you know, see, my year is 1983. That's the year. What do you What do you know about Ron Fellows? Uh, you know, but, uh, yeah, I mean, that was my guy, though. I mean, that whole year in 1983. So, I, yeah, number 27, he had – I think he scored – Two touchdowns back to back weeks. Now Deron Bland's done that, but he did. He scored a touchdown a couple two weeks in a row uh, on defense and special teams. That's what I remember about Ron Fellows. Yeah, he was one of those guys like a Leighton Vanderish type. Just came to work, did what he needed to do. You know, when he was there, he was there, and you didn't really have to worry about him when he was on the field. Yeah, know? that's fair. 
So, uh, but anyways, hey, we we had a great game, and when I was watching that game, uh, I was not only did we have a complete team win, you know, which which we desperately needed, like not just a team win where, you know, all three played good. I would say all three phases played great. Yeah, and I don't think we've had that. It reminds me a couple of years ago, actually, of the Eagles, whenever. Jake Elliott started getting hot as a kicker, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, here we go. Yeah. And then every possession you played against uh, their offense, you knew they were going to get at least three. That was the standard, you know? Yeah. Because anything after the 50, and then that really put a lot of pressure on your team. Right. I think – My question – Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, my question is, for these next four games – looking at it, going down the stretch, regardless of wins or losses, because everyone's going to count the wins and the losses and this and that. And like I've said all year, I don't care until the postseason starts because I've, I've been down this road for the past 20 years and we look real great in November and December. Mm-hmm. And then January I'm watching, you know, two other teams play. But my question is, what would you want to see from the Cowboys Coming off of this win and going into the next four weeks, what do you need to see? And what do we need to see for us to actually say, okay, we're ready. Yeah. Like this is, this is the time, no better time than this. Push all your chips into the middle of the table and let's go. Yeah. Like what, what is that one or two things that you think that if we cleaned up or we, other than like penalties and stuff, you know, yeah. I think that's a young team thing. But as far as, I see, like, if we keep going on this road and the way Dak understands the offense and the way Micah and the defense understand each other, I I just think we need to take this point and this needs to be our standard now, and we have to play better than this every week. And if we do that, we'll definitely – have have a greater shot than I've seen since Emmett was yeah. holding the rock, you know. Uh, yeah, I agree. All right, Brian, appreciate the the call. We got a, a run here. I'm going to answer that that part though. Um, I, what do I need to see? I mean, like you said it. I mean, like this is this is a good football team. This is a really good football team, and they're going to be competitive in the playoffs. We know that it doesn't really matter at this point. I mean, they're they're going to. I'm sure they'll they'll get in the playoffs. We'll get one of the seeds, and we'll see where where they stand. Um, so I don't know. Can they show you anything to make you feel better? Yeah, I mean they can. They can show things that they can stop. Like this week, Josh Allen's probably going to run uh, for a lot of yards. You know, I mean they they can they can make sure and kind of shore that up a little bit. Um, they can run the ball a little bit better. It's going to be a colder game. I don't think weather's going to be bad, but I think it's going to be a cold game. That they, they you know Rico. Um, I thought he ran the ball well. Pollard ran the ball well. They they can do that. Uh, they could they could show us those things. Um, when they play Miami, you know they're obviously going to be tested with speed. So we'll see what what you know the cornerback situations look like there. I mean, it just just be a little bit more consistent than what, what we've seen. But I mean, it's hard to do that. They've won five in a row. Um, there's always things you can improve. Um, that's what every coach in the world will tell you. And so th- there are those things, and they're going to be tested by three. Teams that are also fighting for playoff spot as well here in the next three games. So should be a lot of fun. All right, no show tomorrow. We'll be back on Wednesday. Uh, appreciate all the calls today. For Chris Beam, I'm Nick Eatman. We will see you on Wednesday on Cowboys Storyline. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!